Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino tonight. Governor Bashir details the latest corona crackdown. An NBA team takes a look at UK assistant Kenny Payne. And the Courier Journal's Joe Sanka talks about the Matt Bevan pardons. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome into Hey, Kentucky. Jennifer Palumbo is my co-host tonight. And thank you so much for being here because I desperately needed a break from Keith Farmer. <laughs> well, you know what? We had a good time last week, but I'm <laughs> glad you're back. And you, I think in my, in my 20 years in TV in Lexington, I don't think we've ever worked together. So I'm very excited to be I, here with you. I know. And I got here in 02, so it's 18 for me. Yeah. I mean, first time for everything. Let's go. Let's get started. As it's expected. long overdue. Yes. <laughs> Governor Bashir has ordered Kentucky's bars to close and restaurants to reduce to 25% capacity for the next two weeks in light of the coronavirus surge. The order begins tomorrow evening at 5, lasts for 14 days. Bashir also recommends that schools not hold in-person classes until the third week of August. During a briefing yesterday with the White House Coronavirus Task Force, uh, one of the biggest members, Dr. Deborah Burks, the governor reiterated the importance of doing what we can to curb this virus. And Dr. Burks echoed a similar message by recommending that people wear their masks while out in public. She also stressed that people should be wearing masks even at home if they live in a household with multiple generations. And during the first wave of the pandemic, cases started to spread more in rural areas. Cases have now started spreading in household levels. We can see what is happening in the south moving north. And just to be very clear, what happens first with this new movement of cases is young people are often infected first, particularly in the under 30 age group. They go on to infect unknowingly, most of them are asymptomatic. They go on to infect their parents who then infect or they infect the grandparents who often have significant comorbidities and have a very rocky course. Now, Jennifer, obviously nobody wants to see anything shut down again, um, but these are actually recommendations from the White House that Kentucky is following today. That's right. Dr. Burke said this is what needs to be done based on the second wave that we're now seeing of increased cases across the state. Governor Bashir in his briefing today actually called out Lexington bar goers for being out and about this weekend and saying that this is part of the reason why they decided to shut the bars down for two weeks. There's no way to social distance. It's almost impossible at a bar and people are so close together. So this is something that has to be done for hopefully it's just a two week thing and it makes a difference. But clearly people aren't following the guidelines like they should be. Yes, I hope this makes a difference and I hope it's only two weeks. All right, the weekend brought more protests over racial injustice. In Louisville, hundreds of armed activists demanded justice for Breonna Taylor during peaceful demonstrations on Saturday. That drew counter protesters from a white militia group. Police closed streets and set up barricades to keep the two groups apart as tensions remained on edge in Louisville, where protests have flared for months. Earlier in the day, police say three black militia members were accidentally shot at a park but all were expected to survive. It's not that they're not doing nothing, but what they needed to understand, and I told them, perception is our reality. So whatever y'all show us, that's what we believe. So if you don't tell us nothing, we're gonna think you ain't doing nothing. But if you is doing something, tell us what the it is. And if it's some that we can handle, we might step back and give you a chance to do what the you said you was going to do. But if you don't, we'll burn this to the ground. Meanwhile, over in Carter County, several streets in downtown Grayson were the site of both protests and counter protests yesterday. But police were able to keep any potential violence in check. Uh, Jennifer, this is... Uh, really no signs of, of stopping really until we hear something from the attorney general and he's not going to say anything until I don't, I don't believe until this investigation is wrapped up. 
Well, that's right, and it's been four and a half months, four and a half months for Breonna Taylor's family, and still no answers and still no arrests. And the leader of the three percenter group actually said that Daniel Cameron, the attorney general, told him that Louisville officials botched this investigation so badly that it could take four more weeks. Time is definitely not on their side because the tensions just continue to rise. People deserve an answer, and they need one soon. Yeah, it's it has been too long. I mean, it's just been too long. Um, so we continue to wait. All right, turning to UK basketball, longtime ESPN analyst Dick Vitale says the NCAA should clear Wake Forest transfer Olivier Saar to play in Lexington. In a video Vitale posted to Twitter, he says the NCAA has no choice but to approve his waiver to gain immediate eligibility. They've been making really lenient decisions out there, giving kids eligibility. How could they deny this young guy? No way, shape, and form. And that takes Kentucky to another level. He's got a bunch of talented kids, number one recruiting class, and John Calipari, Santa Claus came early when Mr. Zarr called him up and said, I want to be with Kentucky. I think Kentucky, Baylor, Villanova, I'm telling you, my preseason number one. Meanwhile, UK assistant Kenny Payne is being considered by the New York Knicks for one of its assistant coach openings under new head coach Tom Thibodeau. Outside of his success developing elite big men, the Knicks are apparently intrigued with Payne's ability to recruit former Kentucky stars like Carl Anthony Towns and Devin Booker to New York when they become free agents in the future. Jennifer, they haven't even actually reached out to Kenny Payne yet. I, I personally would be shocked if this is what ends up taking Kenny Payne away from Kentucky. I, I would be shocked too, but you know what? What I'm not shocked about is that he is being mentioned for jobs because as you mentioned, when you talk to Carl Towns and some of the big men that he worked with, they say that the reason why they were able to develop even more than they already had been was because of Kenny Payne and the way that he's able to coach them. Yes, it makes sense. Is it going to happen? I don't think so, but back to Olivier Saar, we have heard that UK is expecting good news about him. So as Dick Vitale says, you know, Kentucky is a great team, even if he doesn't get eligible, but they will be off the charts if he does. And it looks like that's going to happen and it should happen. And I love that Dickie V's just out by the pool, hanging out, thinking about <laughs> Olivier Saar, like yes. we all are. All right. In, in <laughs> Florida, yeah. Now to Kentucky football where the state of the whole sport is in question. The Cats' defense is not. The unit has played a huge role in the team's recent success, and yet, like most things related to UK football, it has not always received the attention or praise it deserves. But that is changing. As sports blog Saturday Down South has released its annual rankings for SEC defenses, Kentucky's 2020 squad comes in at number three, behind only Alabama at two and Georgia at one. And Jennifer, we return a bunch of guys on that defensive front. We can talk about the offensive line, which is also good, quarterback situation, running back's good, but defense, so solid. Right. Oh, it is. And this has always been, you know, Mark Stoops. That's what he has done so well is the defense. And finally, this Kentucky football program is getting some preseason love. And that's long overdue as well. But you mentioned the offensive line was ranked in the top 10 of one of the ra recent rankings. And now the defense top three behind Alabama and Georgia. That's insane. And this is why the, the cruelty of the coronavirus. We have hoping that we get to see this team and the basketball team play because they're both going to be so good. This is so Kentucky football for there to be a coronavirus <laughs> to ruin what could be one yes. of our best seasons of all times. That's so UK football. Oh, hate it. All right. Yeah, fingers crossed we're going to have the seasons. I hope so. All right, now in Hey Kentucky, in case you missed it, a review of recent headlines. Human remains found last week in Nelson County still haven't been identified yet, but the discovery is leading to speculation they could be missing mother Crystal Rogers. Her case is among those featured on the podcast, Bardstown. The neighbor who attacked Senator Rand Paul at his Bowling Green home was back in court today for resentencing in the case. A federal judge ordered Renee Boucher to spend an additional eight months behind bars and six months of home confinement. And a coal operator headquartered in Kentucky, which bought assets from Black Jewel LLC after the company went bankrupt last year, has now itself filed for bankruptcy protection. Rhino Resource Partners plans to sell all its assets and the assets of subsidiaries to a bidder. 
Up next on Hey Kentucky, we return to the controversial pardons issued by former Governor Matt Bevin. Joe Sanka with the Louisville Courier Journal talks about what his publication has uncovered in a story with lots of twists and turns. Stay with us.